Good morning, everyone. My name is Linda White, and it's my pleasure um, to be the officiant this morning at our um, Temiskaming Deanery Morning Prayer Service. Um, it's a great joy for me to introduce our, our special focus for our service today, which is uh, Camp Sunday, and in particular, uh, celebrating our deanery camp, uh, Camp Temiskaming. It was a great joy for me when I moved to Temiskaming almost 20 years ago um, to have the opportunity to see Camp Temiskaming and uh, to have opportunities, many opportunities through the year, the years to interact with the children at the camp as camp chaplain. Um, probably a dozen or so. The focus has always been at our chaplain's time on biblical stories. We've had the story of Joseph and the story of Esther. We've had the parables of Jesus and the miracles of Jesus. And always at camp, um, the focus is on what it means to be a friend of Jesus, to be his follower. Oh, we've had a scripture memory verse and the Grace Foundation here in Temiskaming has been a great blessing to the camp as we've applied for and received uh, bursaries to buy the children um, a Bible or some devotional resource to take home with them. So we give grateful thanks to the Grace Foundation for their help in our work among children at Camp Temiskaming. So in our service today, we'll have the little morning prayer liturgy that we use at Camp Temiskaming. And uh, in, in the service, you'll also hear from some youth, something of what camp uh, means and has meant in their lives. So I hope that you join in with joy on this Camp Sunday. Also today with us is uh, the Reverend Archdeacon Joan Locke, who will be our reader, Val Patterson, who will be our preacher, and Janet Parfit in charge of music and vocals. And so we open with one of our favorite camp songs, This Is My Father's World. <laughs> This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, teach us how to pray. Lord, keep our thoughts from wandering. Lord, cleanse our hearts that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning as part of our service, we're going to have some camp stories from uh, some of the children that have been to camp. And so we're going to start off um, with uh, Veronica, who's going to share a little bit, or with Reese rather, with Reese Northcutt, uh, a little bit about what camp means to him. 
is a very special place that offers friendships, challenges, fun, and adventure. During my first week at camp, I became enthralled with archery, so I stuck with it until I won the highest archery award. Meeting that challenge was so much fun. Every year there is another adventure, but the one that is my favorite is being on the site. Just a few doors down from Camp Tamiskamang of an archaeology dig in which a cache of native remains dating back to many, many years was discovered. I am so looking forward to being back at camp next year. Hi, I'm Shaylin. I've been going to camp basically as long as I can remember. Uh, as a kid, I went there as a camper and since then I've gone back as a member of staff, the camp cook, a counselor, and it's always been a really fun time. It's basically a second home to me at this point. And as a kid, I remember just all the great interactions I had with the staff there and also the other kids. Coming back as a staff member myself has given me the opportunity to bring that experience to other kids. And it's always been a great time and I really enjoy all my experiences there. Let us confess our sins to God. God of mercy, we have sinned against you and against others. We have sinned in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, forgive us all that is past and raise us to newness of life. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Come. Let's sing for joy to the Lord. Let's show praises to the rock who saves us. Let's come to him with thanksgiving. Let's sing songs to him. The Lord is the great God. He is the great king over all gods. The deepest places on earth are his, and the highest mountains belong to him. The sea is his because he made it. He created the land with his own hands. Come, let's bow down and worship him. Let's kneel before the Lord who made us. He is our God, and we are the people he takes care of and the sheep that he tends. Today, listen to what he says. God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, beginning at the 44th verse. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm. He has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice. Rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it. The lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands. And let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world. And the peoples with equity. Lord God, we see your righteous rule in all your works. And we join our voices with the song of your whole creation 
in praising you in and through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our, our second reading is taken from the first letter of John, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world? but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now sing Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, I'm of God, worthy is your name. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have learned from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Lord Jesus, please enlighten our minds with truth Inflame our hearts with love, inspire our wills with courage, enrich our lives with service. Pardon what we have been, sanctify what we are, and order what we shall be. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now in the sixth of seven weeks of Eventide and the third of four weeks exploring Jesus's teachings about living in intimacy with God. 
Following directly on last week's passage in which Jesus portrays himself as the vine and the disciples as the vine's fruitful branches, today's reading, we hear Jesus elaborate on just what sort of fruit he has in mind. Works of love for the sake of joy. God is love. That's found in 1 John 4. This short and sweet statement is a powerful declaration about God's nature. Of all the qualities of God, love is the most far-reaching of them. Do you remember when Jesus was asked about the greatest commandment in the law? Out of hundreds of commands given in the Torah, Jesus responded that the two most important are to love God and to love others. In 1 Corinthians 13, love is clearly described as the most complete power. It is the greatest. 1 Corinthians says, three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Without love, even performing miracles or sacrificing one's life is described as nothing. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Jesus knows this, we should know it. And because God is the truth and cannot lie, because he is light and in him is no darkness, whatever he speaks precisely reflects who he is. There is never any discrepancy between God's word and his character. And who is the word? The word made flesh to dwell among us? Jesus. We hear of the revelation of God to the unity, of the revelation of love to the unity of the Father and the Son in the events leading up to God's greatest expression of love, his Son dying for our sins on the cross. The evening prior to his crucifixion, Jesus spoke of his love for the Father. Jesus said, but so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. Jesus also spoke of the Father's love for him. Father, I desire that you also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. This love is also spoken by God the Father when he declared at Jesus' baptism and his transfiguration, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Think of how important it is that the two of the three recorded times in the New Testament where the Father spoke loud and clear, he spoke of Jesus as my beloved son. And on the third occurrence, as Jesus was predicting his death, recorded in John 12, when the Father spoke, it was also implied, but he said those same words. Since everything that God does is based in love for his creation, let's think about the greatest expression of his love, and namely the sending of his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. We hear this referred to time and again in the New Testament. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And we hear in 1 John, he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This love not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. One of my favorite verses concerning the love is also short and sweet. We love because he loved us first. This mutual loving relationship has existed from eternity between the Father and the Son. And we hear today in the Gospel reading of John 15, the opening statement by Jesus, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Do we realize what Jesus said in that deep, wide, colossal statement? This is a statement that is as vast as the creation itself. It is as astounding beyond belief. We know that the love between God the Father and his only begotten Son is both eternal and infinite in its depths. Its tenderness of feeling and raw emotion is shown in the revelations of Scripture. There can be no human love even faintly similar to the love of God for his Son. And now, with this statement, Jesus tells us that his love for us is identical to the love the Father has for him. Its width must span the universe and surpass it. Its intensity must be brighter than the brightest star. Its origins predate the dawn of creation because the word before it was made flesh was with God before creation. There can never have been a time that Jesus didn't love us intensely. If it's certain that the Father loves the Son, then you can accept the same certainty that Jesus loves you in the same manner. Jesus' words, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you, is meant to give us confidence that we are beloved. God says, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be moved, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed. We need to remember when today's reading was taking place. Within a few hours of saying the words found in John 15, Jesus would be handed over to the authorities and eventually crucified. He knew this was coming. He had been referring to this happening for some time, and the disciples could feel the dread. Jesus was assuring his disciples that he was not abandoning them. His statements of love, joy, and friendship were soothing, truthful words of comfort and support. He was hoping they would understand that on one level, he was about to leave them, but on a deeper level, they were going to be closer than ever. It was as if he was saying, just continue along the path I have shown you and we'll be together. Love one another. You'll thereby abide in my love, which is to say you'll abide in me as intimately as a vine and its branches. Your love itself will be the sign of all signs that we are acting together, living together, abiding together. Look at my intimacy with God the Father. It is based on my listening and embodying and abiding in God's commandments to love. And in this way, God and I are inseparable so, go and do likewise. Listen and embody my commandment to love, and we'll be inseparable too. I want us to be so close that my joy is yours, so that your joy will be perfect joy, complete joy, joy in all its fullness. Isn't that what all loving parents want for their children? That's what God wants for you, my followers. And so, even though the stars may seem to fall over the next few days ahead, 
as I am handed over and sent down into the valley of the shadow of death, remember this, what I want for you and what I promise you and what I give to you is joy. So to what shall this joy be compared, this complete joy? A little later in the Gospel of John, we hear Jesus compares it to um, childbirth. When a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. Jesus's mission for the sake of joy, yes, but not just any kind of joy. Think of it, he says, like the joy of a new mother, strong and creative, exhausted and triumphant, a joy that is no stranger to anguish, but above all, the joy of having brought new life into the world. Our joy will come from the strong, creative, exhausting, and triumphant work of love, creating a new kingdom. So what do we call a relationship characterized by a mixture of listening, love, togetherness, creativity, and joy? In this week's passage, Jesus calls it friendship. Another note of assurance and comfort for his disciples. While Jesus mentions many requirements in John's gospel, he mentions to abide and to believe, he also gives his disciples only one commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. Essentially, he's circling back to that simple, fundamental, important, love God, love others. Jesus says we will be his friends if we obey his commandments. And the emphasis in this passage on keeping commandments isn't a dictator's decree, but quite the opposite. We should do nothing and follow no command that does not build up our neighbor in love build ourselves up in love, and the world in love. Jesus is calling not for the short sort of obedience found in relationships of coercion, but rather the sort found among genuine friends, companions who listen to each other in loving kindness. The English word obedience or obey is from the Latin o, to, and odari, listen. On top of it all, Jesus assures his disciples that his love doesn't depend on them and what they do or don't. Rather, they can depend on his love, come what may. The sadness and the heartbreak, while he comforts and su supports his believers at this time, is almost unbearable because these friends to whom Jesus speaks in this passage will deny and desert him later that very night. Again, it's as if he's saying you don't know it yet, but in a few hours from now, you'll have good reason to doubt yourself, to doubt your faith, your integrity, as never before. But don't worry. You didn't choose me. I chose you. You may find yourself fickle and afraid, but my love for you is steadfast. Nothing you can do will change it. Even the unspeakable things you will be doing tonight. I chose you, I choose you, and I commission you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, works of love for the sake of joy. What a friend we have in Jesus. Faith is an important dimension of our lives as disciples of Jesus. Love is the ultimate goal towards which a living faith will lead. But in John's gospel, we hear of even a higher aim for the sake of which faith and love abide. Jesus calls it complete joy. 
We are commissioned to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, works of love for what? For the sake of joy. This is the for what of God's love and deliverance, the for what of salvation, the for what of Jesus's ministry, and therefore the ministry of the church for joy. Faith, yes, but faith for the sake of joy. Love, yes, but love for the sake of joy. Jesus says, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. What kind of joy? Well, Jesus calling his disciples friends suggests the delight in being together joy of genuine friendship. And in our best relationships that we've had, we can catch a glimpse of what he has in mind. And perhaps that's why Christian camping has been such an, had a, such an impact on young people, especially the ones that we hear from today. Lifelong friendships can start at camp. The special time of togetherness and relating to each other in God's nature his garden of creation can call forth joy. Camp can show kids what a friend we have in Jesus, and they can catch a glimpse of what Jesus has in mind when he says that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete through friendship. And in the light of this week's New Testament reading in Acts, we can add this, love seeks a world in which this complete joy is not just for a privileged few, but for everyone. Camp and the potential to experience that particular type of joy should not be just for a privileged few. St. Peter asked, can anyone withhold the water of baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit? just as we have? That subversive question is important, both then and now. Can anyone withhold the water? Like love, water tends to permeate and overflow limitations. Like joy, water resists attempts to contain it. The Holy Spirit goes where he wills. As Peter goes on to explain, who was I? that I could hinder God. God's love had already overflowed Peter's denial and desertion, including him when he might well have been excluded. Far be it from Peter and far be it from us to presume to withhold or prevent anyone from being included in the family of God's almighty love. God's love for the sake of his creation's joy, knows no bounds. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to truly understand what the Lord Jesus meant when he said that he is one with the Father and that we are to abide in his love. Help us to see that love is a precious union of hearts and a sweet communion of spirits. And just as the Father and Son emanate the same powerful love, so we too can have that same beautiful caring love developing in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us, please, to make our hearts your home and to receive within that home the neighbors, friends, and especially the strangers whom we meet. May we bear much fruit by doing the work of love for the sake of your joy and in turn, ours. Amen. Let us proclaim the beliefs of our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, you brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Use your mighty power to protect us from danger. Keep us from hurting you, ourselves, and others. Guide us today and bless us as we play and work together so that we can praise you for your goodness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray for this deanery and especially for Camp Temiskaming. We pray for the campers who have spent time at camp. Bless and protect them and enrich their lives today with all, the, all they discovered of you at camp. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for those who love, pardon me, who have faithfully served the children you have brought to camp, the directors and spiritual directors, counselors, cooks, and staff and those who have made camp possible by their support and work. We pray for their continued service when, when camp can open again. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the families and friends of the campers. May the experience of your love for the campers help them to know your embracing love. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those in the world who are lonely hungry, frightened, or sad. We remember those whose lives have been affected by COVID, those who serve them, and those who must make difficult decisions on behalf of us all. Please let them know that you are the friend of the friendless and the strength of those who are ill, grieving, or feeling overwhelmed. Lord, hear our prayer. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Kenya. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for hospital and institutional chaplains, for the Reverend Ann Carr, the Reverend Gail Clifton, the Reverend Canon Barbara Graham, the Reverend Rhonda Hurst, and the Reverend Beth Hewson. We also pray for our sister diocese, Terime and Bishop Mwita, as well as their mother's union. Also today we celebrate giving thanks for all mothers and those who have been for us a mother figure. We ask you to bless them and give them your joy. Now in the silence of our hearts, we lift up to, those, to, you, those whose, to you the names of those whose needs are close to our hearts. Together we ask, Lord, hear our prayer. God of all creation, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your great love shine on us, despite humanity's anger, sin, and sorrows. 
Give, we pray, peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to hear a couple of other camp stories and uh, what camp means to other young campers. And so next we'll hear from Veronica. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Veronica. Uh, when I went to camp, Camp Simiskaming is very, was very meaningful to me because I made a lot of friends and learned how to make friends. And the thing that God had taught me while I was there, or that we learned, God taught me was how to love myself and be confident in things I do. Hi, my name is Mason Sherrard. I've been going to camp for a multitude of years to the point where I've lost count on how many times I've went. And what camp meant to me, it was a great place to go meet some new friends and pretty much meet family after meeting them for, uh, or knowing them for a long, long time from all the years that I've went to camp. And that's why I think camp was a really big part of my childhood, going to see all these new people every year for a week, seeing them grow up as they would with me. We close our service with the ancient greeting of the Christian church. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn and one of our favorites at camp is What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Well, our announcements this morning. Um, sadly, again, for the second summer, Camp Tumiskaming will not be able to be operational because of COVID-19. However, um, our camp, some of our camp expenses continue, uh, particularly camp insurance and, and hydro costs and so on. So uh, one of our camp board members conceived the idea of the Camp Tumiskaming Bake Less, Bake Sale. And in it, um, we're encouraged to take the money that we would have spent perhaps on a bake sale uh, to make pies or cookies or a cake and uh, or the money that we would have spent uh, buying back our own baking or other people's baking and uh, make a donation to Camp Tumiskaming to help our camp uh, continue to meet its expenses through the days when there are no camps and, and therefore no camper fees. So if you would like to make a donation to Camp Tumiskaming, you can e-transfer that donation to Camp Tumiskaming, all small letters, Camp Tumiskaming at Outlook.com. Or if it's easier for you and you would like to make a donation, you could mail a check to Camp Tumiskaming at Post Office Box 543, Englehart, Ontario, POJ1HO. That's right at the very bottom of the screen. Uh, if you want to jot that down. You uh, won't have been probably aware, but all of us who are involved in the service today are wearing our, our Camp Tumiskaming t-shirts over top of our clergy shirts and uh, remembering uh, the joy that we have of the love that we share at camp. I hope that next year, if you have never been to Camp Tumiskaming, you'll make it a priority to get there. There'll be a women's camp. There'll probably be a men's work camp. There's a work opening day at the end of May. None of those dates, of course, have been set yet, but uh, that news will go out among our deanery. Uh, camp is just 15 minutes west of New Liskard, Ontario. So a lovely afternoon's drive and uh, we'd love to see you there. Go forth in God's peace and love to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh,